Duke Onklet is under attack by the evil forces of Ganon. I'm going to Gamelon to aid him. But father, what if something happens to you? I'll take the Triforce of Courage to protect me. If you don't hear from me in a month, send Link. Ampa? Don't worry, Zelda. The Triforce of Wisdom promises the king will safely return. Enough. My ship sails in the morning. I wonder what's for dinner. Oh boy! I'm so hungry, I could eat an Octorok! <sighs> A whole month gone, and still no word. I'm certain he's all right. Yeah, that old Ganon's no match for the king. Link, go to Gamelon and find my father. Great! I can't wait to bomb some Dodongos! Wake up, Impa. We're going to Gamelon. All right, dear. I'll get the Triforce of Wisdom. Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Noah Ridley, and we're about to do a let's play of Zelda the Wand of Gamelon. A couple of notes before we start. If you didn't catch that opening cutscene, it explains the entire storyline behind the game. Essentially, Duke Onkelid is under attack by Ganon's forces. Uh, Duke Onkelid lives in Gamelon, and the king is going to go aid him, told Zelda that if he doesn't return back in a month to send Link. Well, he doesn't return back in a month, so Zelda sends Link to Gamelon. Link gets lost in battle, and now Zelda and Impa both have to come to Gamelon to find Link and the king and rescue them both. So that's, that's the, the nitty gritty. The second note is that this is going to be 100% Let's Play meaning that I'm going to be getting all of the items in the game so that you can see all the different facets of this uh, particular so-called little masterpiece. Uh, it's, it's a guilty pleasure of mine, this game is, so uh, I really hope you enjoy it. And we're going to start off with the first level in the game called Aru Anyu. So let's get this Let's Play kick in here. So as you notice, we start off the game getting chased by pigs. What, uh, what game would, is there a better game? Already at two hearts, and we have to face a Dodongo down here. Let's kill that Keys. As we go through the, oh, let me go ahead and finish this Dodongo here. No. Good, good, good. All right, so we got the key. As we go through the game, I'm going to be calling out specific things about the CDI console. We are, we're playing on a CDI right now. Uh, and this, uh, this is one of three Zelda games that were released on the CDI. And we just stabbed that woman in the face. Everyone ran when the Gleok came, but monsters know better than bothering me. Here's a shroud that scares the raps off Gibdo. And as you can see, we get these lovely cutscenes. Uh, throughout the game, so I know you're going to be enjoying these. <laughs> but we just got the shroud there. In this game, we have two uh, two towns. We have the town of Sakato and we have the town of Kobitan. We'll be coming to Sakato very frequently. There's a lot of enemies here that we can grind for rubies. And yes, I said rubies. I'll explain that later. But there are a lot of enemies here that we will grind uh, to get these rubies because we have a lot of items that we need to get in the game that cost rubies. But what I was saying before, uh, I'll be calling out specific things about the CDI console, about this game in particular. Uh, there's just a, a lot of things I feel like you should know. <laughs> Got little disclaimers. Right, so we have. We're, we're just going to sit here and grind a little bit just to just to get some get some money. As before, I was saying rubies. Yeah, we're used to in the, in the Legend of Zelda series to say rupees, but for some reason they wanted to call them rubies here. There's three specific types of rubies. There's a red one, which we're getting here, that amounts about one. We get green ones, which a couple of these enemies in town give, and those are worth five. And then we have blue ones, which are worth ten. And that's pretty much our currency throughout the game. And so while I'm grinding here, I'm just going to give a little bit of rundown about this game in particular. This game was released in 1993, uh, and it was released alongside of Zel A Link the Faces of Evil, 
which was a complimentary game. And there was another CDI game that really didn't share a lot of the same characteristics, and that one's called uh, Zelda's Adventure. But this game and Link to Faces of Evil share a lot of similar characteristics. The gameplay is very similar. Uh, the difference here is that we're playing as Zelda, the other one is you're playing as Link. And the characters are a lot different, although they do share some characters. Um, both very, very interesting games, to say the least. And this was on the, the CDI console, which was made by Philips. Now, both of these games, uh, Zelda the Wand of Gamelon and Link to Faces of Evil, were a partnership between Nintendo and Philips, so this is an actual licensed Nintendo game. They don't recognize it as canon, so the storylines that you see in all of these three Zelda games on the CDI are pretty much just big sidesteps. Okay, we're down to one heart. We really need to be careful, <laughs> even though it doesn't really matter because we're grinding here. How many rubies do we have? 57. Okay, so we're very close. While I have this menu open, this is our menu screen. To the left, we'll have all of the items that we get in the game. To the right, we'll have a lot of our stats and some of our bigger items. We'll get crystals. You'll see my sword and shield there. We do get upgrades on those, so you'll see those there. So we do have that standard menu screen, although you have to access it by kneeling. And there's a specific button on the CDI console that you have to press uh, while you're kneeling down to be able to access that screen. Another interesting part of that, too, is uh, these doorways, you press that same button to enter. So you can't access your inventory list by standing in front of the door. It will register the door first, and you'll never be able to get to your item screen. It's, it's, it's a, one of those things about the CDI. Right. These birds I'm killing right here are called Arpagos. I believe that was the, the correct name. Right, we're just going to get a couple more here, and then we're going to go into the shop and grab some items. All right, I'm not even going to risk not even going to risk it. <laughs> Alright, so we have three items here. We have the bombs, which we only pick up once. We have the rope up there at the top, which is going to be... Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get those frequently. And then we have the lantern oil, which we'll use as well. So we're going to go ahead and grab one bomb. And let's get some rope. Two, three... How many rubies do we have left? Twelve. Right, we need to grab some lantern oil. Maybe two. Well, let's go talk to the shopkeeper so you can see what this guy has to say. Of course I'm on your side, but I still have to sell the stuff. Just pick what you want. I'll handle the rubies. Oh, some of these are so creepy. That one's very creepy. Creepy old man. Let's get let's get out of here. <laughs> this is not a good place for you to be. But anyway, it's a partnership between Nintendo and Philips. Nintendo licensed some characters, so an interesting tidbit is that you'll see some characters that you've seen in other games in here, albeit in a completely different view. Completely different art. Alright, so we now have the Shroud, we now have rubies, and we have some items. So we're going to go ahead and leave and go to the next town, Kobiton, which is north of here. And in Kobiton, we're going to get an item that we will need very much throughout the game, which will be our lantern. All right, good, good, good. Ah, no, we don't need you. Nope, back. Music in this game, uh, it does show its age for sure, but some music in here isn't so bad. If you like 80s synth, you will you will enjoy the music in this game. Okay, this is dangerous. Oh, <laughs> that's all right. Ah, I gotta find that rope. Can't get all right. So we gotta, so you see we have our blue ruby there. We've picked up about 10 rubies. Now we have, now we have our key, which lets us out of town. <laughs> Very helpful. All right. All right, 
right, so these creatures you see here are Moblins. They've made their appearance in this game. Hey, I made it. That's the first time I've ever made it over, uh, jumped over that, that sphere. Yeah, I think we'll be able to make it through here. Yes. As you see, we have our lantern. Lantern get. All right, so now we can leave this town. That's pretty much all we needed to get here. We will make our way back to Sakato. One thing that we need to pick up there before we end this episode. Oh, here we go. Let's see what this person has to say. Those darn Moblin have eaten everything. i give anything for an Arpago's sake. That only means we need to go find an Arpagos egg somewhere. I should also mention too, what I'm really excited about this Let's Play is I haven't picked up all of the items in this game before. So it'll be really interesting to see some of these, um, these new items that we're going to be picking up. And you've also noticed that I've been stabbing folks to talk to, and that's the only way you can talk to somebody is if you stab them. As well as the only way that you can exit the stage is by stabbing that little Triforce chart thingy in the bobber that's floating in the air. All right, so let's come back to Sakato, and we're going to pick up one item here that will for sure help us throughout the game. First, I'm going to pick up some of these rubies here because we can't have enough rubies in this game. There are items we need to buy, and there are items that require rubies for them to work properly. I'm just going to do one little quick... One little quick walk up and down town here. Destroy some of these. Those little guys with the little axes. If you remember back in Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link, when you get into the caves, uh, in certain caves, you'll see those little orange creatures with the, the axe. I believe those are the same thing. Although I cannot remember the name for the life of me. here. Now this is where we're going to pick up an item that we need, particularly if we're doing 100%. First let's get that lantern going here. Let's grab some rope in case we need to do some climbing. I believe we do. Yes. We'll come up here. Just get through, just get through the door. Move through here. Nice. No. Good. Power sword. What's the power sword? Pretty much like a link to the past. With full health, you can shoot projectiles from your sword. If you lose any health from here, it goes away. The power sword. That's all we needed to pick up from here. Which is a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. What did I do? No. I'm going to ignore that ru ruby. What are you? So that's the interest. That's the other interesting part. We're wasting rope. Um, is in order for me to exit stages, I have to hit the same button that uses an inventory item. So I have to figure out where this door is. Otherwise, I'm going to be using items. Goodness gracious! Right here. That was dumb. But nonetheless, we have our power sword. And I believe we've got a little bit more rubies here so I'm going to grab a little bit more rope here since we just wasted how many do we have we have 67 rubies five rope let's grab two more one two and let's grab another oil and I believe with that we are ready to progress in the game so in the next episode, we will continue moving forward. You'll see some new areas, and we will make our way through the land of Gamelon. I will see you on the next episode.